The Lord be with you. You may have heard that there was COVID, a positive case in our household. Just want to reassure everyone that everyone in the auto household is healthy and doing well now. I myself was tested and was negative. So we all feel very confident that we can re-enter society grateful that it wasn't a poor experience although it is for many, and we'll remember those in prayer who are suffering from COVID. Let's now join in our opening hymn, Jesus Christ, My Sure Defense.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful conditions. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. O oh Lord, make me know my end, and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few hand breaths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. And now, O oh Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Today's Old Testament reading for the last day of the church year comes from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture. And on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, And I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder, and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David. And he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Today's epistle comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, So also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjected under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, 
when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations. He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. When the king, then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then... They also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today, we imagine what it's like when we die and see our judge. But we won't use our imagination to imagine. We'll just let God's word tell us what the day is like. And I'd like us to interact a bit today using our bulletin so that you can read some things out loud that you haven't yet read. So please turn to the front of your bulletin to the opening hymn, Jesus Christ, My Sure Defense. And instead of singing, you'll hear yourself speak verse 5 that talks about your body rising. So together, let's read verse 5 that begins with glorified. Glorified I shall anew with this flesh then be enshrouded. In this body I shall view God my Lord with eyes unclouded. In this flesh I then shall see Jesus Christ eternally. It's based on 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 15. In your body, you'll stand before God. Now, let's open the bulletin to the top of page 3, where the intro it is. A moment ago, I as the pastor read that first line. But I'd like to invite you to read the first line of the intro it that begins with, in keeping. In keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So that's the teaching from 2 Peter chapter 3. You won't stand before pearly gates. You won't stand on a cloud. The place you'll stand before God is new heaven and new earth, a physical place. Finally, Let's turn to the next page. Up at the top left, it says the collect of the day. And the pastor read that previously, but for you to read it, it's kind of chilling. So together, beginning with eternal God, let's read the collect. Eternal God, merciful Father, You have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. That's the teaching of Matthew chapter 25. And it reminds us that you have a responsibility to follow God strictly. We're to be holy people, gathered in worship, and watching for Jesus' return, because his return is judgment day. You can set your bulletins aside. The thing about following God is it means we make choices. We go a certain direction, which obviously means we don't go a whole lot of others. You have to make choices who your friends will be, if you'll adopt the thinking of those friends, or if you'll recognize, the more I think about it, maybe that is not for me. In all of our choices, God is watching. And in our hearts, we know God's watching And one day, we will stand on a physical new earth before God, our judge. Today's Old Testament reading was pretty easy to understand. God said he's a shepherd, so he's seeking out people to be in his flock. But there are differences between people and their attitudes. And he says he's going to sort out the sheep from the rest. Today's gospel was similar, and Jesus says, I will be your judge. 
It was written in Matthew 25, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he'll sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. So when we hear this, we're nodding our heads and we understand, yeah, I guess it really is important what kind of choices I make here on earth. You all did pretty well in singing today's sermon hymn. And there was a curious and unusual teaching in there. We heard about seeing the one whose head was crowned with thorns. We also heard a lot about he suffered shame and so do we. I'd like us to think back to our sermon hymn. We sang this, the head that once was crowned with thorns thorns is crowned with glory now. You all understand Jesus was crucified and they smashed all these thorns into his head and it was kind of ironic because the sign above him says the king of the Jews. So the soldiers were mocking him saying that these thorns that they smashed in his head or like a crown or a diadem. So when Jesus rose and began appearing in Jerusalem in the vicinity, those soldiers and the people who opposed him, they kind of flipped out. They just couldn't take it in that he's back. The same guy that was hanging there, and a lot of them were joking about it while the soldiers were jamming tree thorns into his brow. It made a lot of people repent and say, I'm going to have to answer for this. The head that once was crowned with thorns, crowned with glory now, a royal diadem adorns the mighty victor's brow. Jesus isn't dead, so... He's the one that's watching your decisions. So if you say what people do doesn't really matter, you're basically pretending he can't see. But the account of Jesus' life includes his resurrection appearances for 40 different days, and it includes the disciples affirming that he ascended alive into the clouds. So nothing escapes his eyes. But did you know, as we start to look differently about Jesus, that this judge of yours prays for you? One day you'll stand before him, doubtless. But you're going to realize as you see him the first time how much he suffered for you. You'll see the cost of him giving up his life so that you could be forgiven of your sin, so that you could be called a sheep. Don't we want to be called sheep and set off to the right rather than on the left? You're going to see Jesus, and it's going to be pretty awe-inspiring because you'll get to realize, man, he is flesh and blood just as surely as I am. And while you're looking at him, being a real person, you'll also take note of yourself and say, didn't I just die? This is amazing. Though I died, I'm here in flesh and blood. So you're going to make the connection, oh my goodness, I'm in the final judgment. It's like happening right before me. So what will your choices yield. Because you know you're going to be sorted. God will separate sheep from sheep. So how will it go for you? You won't be judged because you did lots of stuff. We all do lots of stuff. 
But the difference is who you lived for. If you lived for God and you were thankful for his salvation and in your heart you said, I really need to please God above everything else, then your reward on that day is to receive grace. But if you shun God, it doesn't go well. If you've lived for God, all the things that you've ever done, surprisingly, have been counted as good. You sought to please him. You were thankful that Jesus died on a cross and you kind of felt his love while you were here in this earth. You recognize you were made clean in baptism and it was like a gift that you were made clean so you sought to live like a baptized person. But some make choices in defiance of God's word. Some don't like having Jesus as an authority and for them it will not go well. You see how your choices matter a great deal as Christians it's very freeing to know that we have already been judged as sheep and that we are in the body of Christ even now and so as grace-filled Christians we look out at this generation and we pray for everybody that's our first reaction a Christian sees suffering and hunger, and we find a way to alleviate that, even if it's small. A Christian also thinks about the generations that are going to follow us. We care very much about husbands and wives, about bearing children, about preserving life. A Christian prays for all enemies. We pray for people who are unhappy, those who do harm. We even pray for people who oppose God. And do you know what we do? We try to preserve the life of our enemies. Have you ever thought of it that way? While other people want to silence us, even kind of push us to the margins, some people want to put their own version of a crown of thorns on our heads to try to humiliate us. And yet we follow our Savior and we let them humiliate us. Even if they win the day, will they win the battle? No, because in the resurrection we'll find that because we suffered with Christ here, we shall live with our victorious Lord there. It is my prayer that you have a rich and overflowing prayer life. That it starts in the morning, you find yourself casually praying through the day, and at the end of the day, you're so grateful to God for how good he's been. I pray that you know you are a sheep of his flock, and you can pray without fear about anything. And I also pray that you have the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Life is so hard. And things get so unbearable so often that we need something from outside, the actual Holy Spirit, to come and do his consoling work in hearts that ache. As you love the Lord now, I assure you, that you will find that you are loved and that you are judged with mercy on that day when you stand before Jesus Christ. The life to come, it shall go well for you. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which is beyond our understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Today, we especially want to be thinking about Keith and Joyce Wagner. They are both preparing for surgeries. Uh, Keith Wagner will be having shoulder surgery on Monday, uh, followed within the week with Joyce Wagner having foot surgery. So it'll be interesting times for their household, and we pray for the whole Wagners, and perhaps we can be of service to them. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are a merciful God and have taught us the way of your commandments. We pray that you will pour out your grace into our hearts and change us. Cause your grace to bear fruit in us, that being mindful of your laws, we may always be directed to live by them. Help us to resist all evil and to live a godly life as you see fit. Help us to follow the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus, that we might walk in his steps and not be afraid to suffer with him, so that we might possess the kingdom that he says is in store for all who would take up their cross and follow him. Lord, in your mercy, everlasting God, through your Son Jesus, you commanded us to love our enemies. You commanded us to do good to those who hate us, even to pray for those who persecute us. So we implore that by your gracious working, you would bring our enemies to repentance, that they may have the same promises and forgiveness that we have received, and that we may be of one mind and heart with those who are separated from us at this time. Gracious Lord, you are capable of doing this, for you are the head of the church and have turned the hearts of many. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, in mercy, you brought physical healing to many who needed it. Today we pray for the same for our brothers and sisters. Keith and Joyce Wagner, Doug Redman, Bonnie Stair, Scott Johnson, Helen Pragman, Jim Haney, Donna Underwood, Debbie Fuchs, Joanne Davis, Kathy and Jim Allier. We pray for Dan Folker, Molly Buckseth, Roger Wilson, John Keyes, Lauren Johnson, Lona Lusher, Tim McAllister. And we also pray at this time for those who are on our hearts, those who are suffering those who are in need. O oh Lord, hear our petitions as we intercede for them. Gracious God, preserve your church. Help us to know that you are the good shepherd and we are the sheep of your flock. We pray that we would continue to serve in your kingdom, reaching those who have not yet heard your saving message of grace. Give us a nobility to take this task that you have placed upon our shoulders, that we might serve in your name and that many might come to faith. Into your hands, O Lord, we entrust all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. We continue now with the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead 
and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the supper, cup after supper, And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you peace.
First, I want to share with you all some opportunities for being charitable during this holiday season. Out there in the narthex, we're collecting things for the people who live in northeast Kansas City. Out of our Redeemer Lutheran Church, they have a outreach to their neighborhood. Some are homeless, and some are just unemployed and surviving on government checks. And yet, what uh, our Redeemer Lutheran Church has been able to do is forge relationships with them and even invite them on Sunday afternoons to come to church. So they've got a really unique outreach and we're doing a Christmas gathering of goods. What we're going to do is prepare Christmas or Thanksgiving baskets, I should say, and then the people of that neighborhood can line up and get their basket full of goods. Second thing that you could do is Lee Summit North, our closest high school here. Uh, they have a lot of families who qualify for free school lunches, and some of those families are in need of additional food throughout the week and on the weekends. So we help stock their food pantry at Lee Summit North High School. So there's a black grocery cart out there, and you can bring goods at any time, any kinds of food or paper goods or whatever, in order to help the families from that high school. Also, out in the narthex right now, you'll see a ton of books. It happens to be a preschool fundraiser. And this evening, there are two people from our preschool staff who are available if you case, in case you wanted to browse those books and see if there might be upcoming Christmas gifts or something for someone in your family. Uh, so the book fair is going to be going on for about another week. Uh, then, uh, just to be thinking a little bit ahead, we're going to be having our annual voters meeting on December 13th. Just want to keep you in the know. We can do some of it in person, but you can also participate virtually. So be on the watch for that weekly email we give you and there will be a way for you to link on that and participate virtually in the voters' meeting on Sunday, December 13th at 9.30. Now, do you guys have any announcements for the church? You are a blessing. You are the sheep of God's flock. Go in peace.